Welcome to the PWR Steer video series. I'm Mike, Program Director. Today, we're gonna to learn to inspect, test, flush, and bleed the system. Let's get started. Today, we're working on a 2007 GMC truck with a 4.3 motor. Now, we've determined that the pump is fairly noisy, so let's do a full inspection. Of course, in order to do that, the engine must be off. First, we'll check the belt to make sure it's not cracked or contaminated with oil. Make sure the fluid in the reservoir is at the proper level. Then, check the power steering lines to see if you can spot any leaks. If there's a power steering fluid leak, air can get into the system, and quite often, that's the cause of a noisy pump. Now, we've all heard this noise before, and since we've already inspected the system for fluid leaks and didn't find any, we know the pump is bad. A new pump will need to be installed. There we go. We've just removed the old pump, and before we install the new pump, just a reminder, PWR builds a little bit of end play in every pump, and that's to enable the pulley to align with the serpentine belt. Okay, now let's install the new pump. In this case, the reservoir is part of the pump, so we should bleed it after it is installed. The new pump is now installed and the lines have been connected. Next, we need to flush the system by disabling the engine from starting and disconnecting the return line to the pump. Crank the engine over, pushing the old contaminants out through the return line. Once you see clear power steering fluid flowing, reconnect the hose. The system has now been flushed, and you can see how critical this process is for flushing out the old contaminants. Just so you understand, there is a high pressure line and a low pressure line in the power steering system. The power steering pump sends the fluid to the power steering rack through one hose, a high pressure hose, and it returns to the power steering fluid reservoir through a second hose, a low pressure hose. The hose that sends the fluid back to the reservoir and pump is called the power steering return line. Some power steering systems incorporate a fluid cooler, which is located on the low pressure side of the system. If a cooler is included, the return line runs from the steering gear to the cooler and from the cooler to the reservoir. Remember that the power steering system is a closed loop system, and if the system is open in any way, air will get in. So whether you replace a hose, a pump, a rack and pinion unit, or a gearbox, there's going to be air entering the system. The idea is to get the air out as quickly as we can to prevent it from damaging the replacement part upon startup. To demonstrate this, we've connected into the pressure line with a flow meter, and a pressure gauge. Now we're going to fill up our replacement pump with the recommended fluid type. Now before starting the engine, turn the wheel lock to lock 10 times. Refill the reservoir if needed. Then start the engine and turn the wheels again lock to lock 10 times. Checking the reservoir one last time and checking the system for leaks. Here you can see the bubbles in the new fluid. This is the air we need to remove. We can see from the flow meter that we have proper flow in the system. We can also see on the pressure meter that the pressure is normal. We have moved the wheels in one direction to lock and can see that the bypass valve is working properly in the pump. Now we've disconnected the tester and checked the fluid level in the reservoir one more time. The next step is to vacuum bleed the system to get the remaining air out of the fluid. This is our last step. We will pull 18 to 20 inches of vacuum for five minutes to remove the remaining air in the system. This will ensure a quiet and trouble-free installation. Let's do a quick recap. Inspect the power steering system and the suspension system. Check belts and hoses for cracks, leaks, or oil contamination and consider replacing them if they are five years old or older. Compare the new product to the old product. Flush the system with the recommended fluid type. 
Always install a new remote reservoir if applicable. Always reassemble using factory torque specs. Vacuum bleed the system every time a line is open. When ordering a PWR part, here is a guide for when a pulley and or the reservoir is included with the pump. The suffix will always determine what's in the box. P means the pulley is included. R means the reservoir is included. PR means the pulley and reservoir are included. When ordering a PWR rack and pinion unit, here is a guide for when outer tie rod ends are included. The suffix will always determine what's in the box. Any rack part number with a T suffix determines that the outer tie rods are included. For example, 42-2706T. Thanks for watching our PWR Steer video series, and please check out our other videos. And remember, our products are 100% new, 100% tested, engineered in Memphis, Tennessee.